I'm Andrew Lang, Professor of Law and Chair in International Law and Global Governance at the University of Edinburgh. If the UK leaves the EU without a deal, that means that UK exports to the EU will be treated just as uh, exports from any other country with which the EU doesn't have a free trade agreement. That means that there will be customs declarations to fill out. There may well in many cases be tariffs to be paid as well as checks at the border. Now, the plan is, as the UK government has told us, to replicate existing trade agreements as quickly and as simply as possible so as to ensure the status quo after Brexit Day. But there are a number of real difficulties with this. Part of the problem is the sheer number of these agreements. The EU has around 40 free trade agreements with over 70 countries. The quickest recent major EU agreement was with Vietnam. That took roughly three years to go from the beginning of negotiations to a conclusion of a text. Of course, it's always possible to do free trade agreements more quickly if one reduces the level of ambition. There's always a trade-off between speed and quality, but I would have thought that the interests of the UK in the longer term are in high quality, high ambition agreements, rather than getting a raft of very quick agreements in short order. We export over 150 billion pounds worth of services every year, and about half of that goes to the EU. Of course, financial services are a major chunk of that, but it's much bigger than financial services. It's professional and business services, legal, accountancy, it's scientific and technical services, and a lot of it are services connected to and bundled with the sale of manufactured goods. For example, one big issue facing a number of professional services sectors has to do with professional qualifications. Right now, a number of UK professional qualifications are recognised in other EU countries as fulfilling their requirements. These arrangements will fall away on Brexit Day, with the result that potentially 27 different arrangements will apply to the recognition of UK professional qualifications. In some sectors, this could be an absolute barrier to cross-border trade in services in the short term. So how are disputes likely to be resolved under a free trade agreement? This is an important point as it's very different from under EU law. Under a free trade agreement, trade disputes are to be taken to an international tribunal set up under the free trade agreement itself. Businesses are not permitted to bring disputes themselves on their own behalf, it's governments who bring claims on behalf of exporters. Moreover, at the end of the dispute, there's no damages award, no compensation for damage that exporters will suffer. Instead, the remedy is change to the law of the importing country. So what's likely to happen on Brexit Day if there's no deal? There's always some degree of discretion in the application of rules and customs rules are no different. But I think it's unrealistic to expect this to be a complete solution to the disruptions on Brexit Day. There are some legal complications. For example, WTO law, which would govern the relationship between the UK and the EU on Brexit Day, requires the UK to treat all its trading partners equally. If the UK were to simply ignore or disapply some of its rules in relation to imports coming from the EU to smooth the process, that would be a violation of WTO law, and it would also likely anger some of the UK's other trading partners with whom it will be seeking to negotiate FTAs in the near future. In addition to the legal problems, there may also be political reasons not to expect this to happen. On the EU side, there may well be some interest in ensuring that the dislocation and disruption caused by Brexit is visible. And indeed, on both sides, there will still be a strong impetus to get to a deal, which also means keeping up pressure on the other side. In the longer term, the benefits of Brexit will depend crucially on the deal which is struck with the EU and also the future FTA deals with major trading partners of the UK. In the short term, are there other benefits to UK producers? Perhaps we would expect, for example, sterling to drop in value, which will make UK exports cheaper and potentially boost them. 
For those UK producers who directly compete against EU imports, they too will find their competitive pressure from EU imports to be reduced and they may well be able to fill some of the demand left. But we shouldn't overestimate that. Many of the most important imports from the EU into the UK, mechanical equipment, pharmaceutical products, electronic equipment, are not easily substitutable with domestically produced UK equivalents. Scottish businesses should be prepared for any scenario, but of course we're all hoping that cooler heads will prevail and a deal will be struck well before Brexit Day.